Hi guys, so in this lesson I'm going to introduce you to the scalar product and we're going to use it to find the angle between two vectors. So um, I'm going to do this example in a second, but first I want to just kind of talk to you about the scalar product using this example here. So imagine I have, I'm just looking 2D because it's easier to obviously visualize. Imagine I have two vectors, so this vector and this vector. This guy's vector is length 6, this guy's length or magnitude is 5. So that's the nice that's the nice three four five triangle so he has a magnitude of five i i think i mentioned in the previous operations of vectors lesson that multiplying vectors is not straightforward because how can it be straightforward what does it mean to multiply together two vectors um it's easy to multiply five times six i get 30 but um what if what if this vector was going this way let's say it was going like this so how could he have the same how could this times this be the same as this times this it just that wouldn't make any sense so we define we've two definitions there are two ways to multiply vectors the scalar product and the cross product we'll get to the cross product later um or well soon but just in this lesson i want to talk about the scalar product so the scalar product is defined as this we multiply so it's it's this it's the length it's the length of v and we say v dot w or a dot b that's what it's called sometimes called the dot product i actually call it the dot product so the dot product and um, because we have a dot in the middle that's the that's a multiplication sign so we're going to multiply this times this and it's the it's the length or the magnitude of one vector times the magnitude of the other vector times the cost of the angle between them so kind of what you're doing is like if this was let's say this is um let's say this is v and this is w then then this red line here there that's actually the that is actually w so the red line here going this direction is well i don't even need the direction but it's the w cos theta. We know that from trigonometry. So this is actually the magnitude of w, of w times cos of theta, where theta is obviously this angle here between them. So we end up just doing 6 times, and in this case, it's, in this case, it is um, 3. So it's just 6 times 3 gives me, um, 6 times 3 gives me 18. Now, if you were to actually, so this vector here is, let's say it's 6, 0, because it's 6 along and 0 up. And if I do 6, 0 dot, so I'm going to multiply it by this vector, which is 3, 4, 3, 4. The way I can get the dot product is this. Look, it's v1 times v dot, v, uh, v1, w1, plus v2, w2, plus v3, W3. So quite simply, this times this plus this times this plus this times this if there was a, a k component. So, But there isn't. So it's just 6 times 13 is 18 plus 0, which is just 18. And that's kind of shown it there. So the scalar product is when you multiply when you multiply the two vectors using the scalar product or the, or the dot product, you get a scalar, which is why it's called a scalar product. So you don't get a vector. When we, when we do the cross product, you're going to get a vector. But the scalar product or dot product, we get a, we get a scalar. Okay, so let's do this. It's it's very very straightforward. Once you understand, once you understand this, or even if you don't understand this, it's very it's very simple. It is um, this dot this, which is two times four eight plus negative one times two is minus two plus six times one is six equals 8 minus 2 is 6, 6 plus 6 is 12. So the dot product of A and B, or A dot B, equals 12. Simple. So there's two kind of, two ways to get the dot product. This way and this way. And we're going to use this formula. This formula is what we're going to use to find the angle between two vectors. And you see it here, rearranged. So this is just, if you do, if you rearrange this and say cos of theta is V dot W over magnitude of v times magnitude of w, you get this because this v dot w is this from here. 
So hopefully that made sense. Okay, example two. Now I just mix and match whether I write it like in this in this form or an IJK form, just so you're all getting used to the two forms that they, they can write it in. Okay, so find the angle between the vectors A and B. So the angle between two vectors, cos of theta, is equal to A dot B, A dot B, over the magnitude of A times the magnitude of B. Simple. Which is equal to, now at the side here, I'm going to do A dot B. A dot B equals, and remember I said when I first introduced you to vectors, I said I always prefer working with um, like this, not i, j, and k. So this dot b is negative 2, 5, 2. And this equals negative 4 minus 5 plus 6 equals negative 9 plus 6 is negative 3. Then I'm going to do, I'm going to move this down, guys, because I want space. Always use space. Okay, so this is a dot b. The magnitude of a, the magnitude of a, magnitude of a is equal to the square root, the square root of 2 squared plus 1 squared plus 3 squared, which is 4, 5 plus 9 is 14, so that's root 14. And the magnitude of b is equal to the square root of 2 squared. 2 squared plus 5 squared plus 2 squared. So see now I've started just, I, I ignore the negative because I'm squaring it, so it's going to be positive anyway. It just it saves time and less likely to make mistakes. So 4 plus 4 is 9 plus 25 is 34, so it's root 34. So all I need to write here is, well, let me, um, hang on, 34. Let me write it, or let me write this here. So cos of theta, cos of theta equals a dot b, which is negative 3, over, and you don't even have to work this out, just leave it like this, root 14 times root 34, and then theta is equal to, and you can just go straight to your calculator once it's open, um, you don't even need to work this out first, you just go straight to inverse cos. So close this, add a calculator. I want trig inverse cos. I'm then going to use this function here. And I'm going to just do negative 3 over root 14 out of the root multiply by root 34 and my in degrees or radians, he didn't ask. So vectors is one time you, you might see degrees come up more than radians. But if he doesn't say, I can certainly give radians. 1.70874. 1.70874. I could put radians or I don't even need to. If they ask, if the whole question is in degrees, of course, change your calculator to, to, to degrees and give your answer in degrees. But that's it. That's how we find an angle uh, between two vectors. Now, one question I often get is, well, what if, the, what if, how is there a vector or an angle between two vectors that aren't even touching? Well, remember, if you've got two vectors, one there and one there, remember a vector, you can pick it up and move it. It's still the same vector. So now you've got an angle there between two vectors. And actually, that reminds me. The, when you find the angle, so here you've got, if these two ve vectors are crossing, you've got two angles. You've got one there and one there. And when we do an equation of a line, it'll be very important that you differentiate between the two. But when you get the angle between two vectors, what you're finding is this angle. It's the angle, not the acute angle, but the angle but where the, the direction of the vectors is moving away from. So let me give you, let me give you a separate example. Imagine I had this vector and um, I don't know this vector the angle is this angle here so it's in between the two it's moving away from here it's moving away from here it's in between the two it's not this angle 
Okay, last example. Let A equals this. This is from a HL past paper. Let A equal 2K negative 1 and B equals this. Given that A and B are perpendicular, find the possible values of K. Now, this is a very, very important concept. The, f the formula is cos theta equals A dot B over the magnitude of A times the magnitude of B. Now, if they're perpendicular, perpendicular means right angles, 90 degrees, pi over 2 radians. What is the cos of 90 degrees or the cos of pi over 2 radians? Hopefully you know it's 0. So the only way that, that vectors can be perpendicular is if this is 0, which means this is 0, which means this, because the numerator has to be 0. So for when you see perpendicular in vectors, and this comes up all the time, check your past papers, you'll see you'll see the word perpendicular in vectors questions. When it comes up, you immediately go ding ding, a dot b equals 0. So a dot b equals 0. So I have my a now, there's a k in there, but whatever. Um, hang on, something wrong with my pen. Um, I have a is 2k negative 1. So 2k negative 1 dot b negative 3k plus 2k. This has to equal 0. Now you'll see 2 times negative 3 is negative 6 plus k times k plus 2 uh, minus k equals 0. So what I've got here is a quadratic minus 6 plus k squared plus 2k minus k equals 0. Let's bring this up here, make it k squared plus k minus 6 equals 0. This is a nice quadratic that factorizes. I'm going to go, go with k plus 3 times k minus 2. Hopefully you guys can all do this now. It's just factors of k squared or k and k. Factors of 6 are 3 and 2 and has to be a plus and a minus and the big one has to be a plus. So k therefore k plus 3 equals 0 or k minus 2 equals 0. k equals negative 3 or k equals 2. Just check, go back to the question. k has to be an element of the real numbers. Is negative 3 a real number? Yes. Is k equals 2? Is 2 a, uh, a real number? Yes. So they are our two solutions. Done. Okay, that's it. I know I went through that pretty quickly, but trust me, once you do a lot of vector stuff and, and we go further into the into the series of lessons, this will be actually very, very, this will become very, very familiar to you. The dot product, um, it's just this times this times this plus this times this plus this times this. This is also the formula, which comes from this, this thing. And it is how we find the angle between two vectors. And very, very importantly, if they're perpendicular, the angle is 90 degrees, which means the cost of the angle is zero, which means a dot b equals zero. I'm just going to write that here because it's important. V, I'll go with V dot W equals zero if perpendicular. That didn't look perpendicular. Straight line. There. If perpendicular, V dot W equals zero. Okay, that's it. Um, see you in the next lesson.